Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. For those of you joining for the first time, my name is Elaine Travis. I am a career hairstylist. I've been a color specialist for exactly almost half of the years that I've been doing hair. I'm behind the chair 32 years. I've been specializing in color for about 16 of those 32 years. And my passion right at this point in my career is paying it forward and sharing everything I've learned over the years with other colorists, helping them to reach their goal of becoming a six-figure colorist. So thank you for joining. I hope I get a lot of people on here live today. Um, I wanted to talk about the, the biggest number one thing for me in reaching my goal of becoming a six-figure colorist has hands down been education. I have attended so much education over my 32 years in the industry, most of which was um, picked out specifically for hair color. You know, I would still learn hair cutting. I would still go to a class where they did everything, but I would kind of shy away from the haircut part because I was so laser focused on the cutting, I mean, on the color. So um, just continuing to grow and learn. And again, this was, I was licensed in 1986. So I didn't have YouTube videos. I didn't have online education. I did, all I had was the monthly once a month magazine that would come in the mail, Modern and American Salon, and I would devour them from cover to cover. And the thing that I would look for in that magazine was where is the closest education that I can get myself in front of new information. And I really do believe when I look back on my time as a colorist, that that is truly what set me apart. I, I want to share with you my list of the top 10 things that I think set can set you apart as a colorist in your area. If you are watching this on the replay, please still uh, go ahead and comment in the comment section. Just comment the word color, and I'm able to send you the PDF of my top 10 tips. And some of it is professionalism and you know what you can do differently in the salon, but most of it is hair color tips that you may have been coloring hair for 40 years and you never knew. I myself, last night, I was going to bed. I keep trying to get to bed at a decent hour and it never happens. And I was ready for bed and Instagram pops up and says that someone that I follow is going live. So I was like, oh, let me see what she has to say. And then I saw that she was interviewing someone else that I really admire in the industry. And he is a chemist. So if you're not familiar with um, Dennis Gebhardt from Guru Villages, I highly suggest you tune in to any of his lives, join his um, Facebook page. Um, I don't know if he, I know he has classes, but he definitely has um, a private Facebook group, Guru Village. So check him out. He has been in the business even longer than me. He's, I think he's at least 40 years in the industry and he worked for a lot of the hair color manufacturers. So he completely understands the chemistry of hair color. And I have to admit, you know, as a colorist who's very busy behind the chair and who teaches, I don't like when the technical terms start getting thrown out, you know, alkalis and solvents and pH numbers. And Dennis is very big on getting those pH strips and measuring the pH in hair color and the pH in the products that you're using and all about closing down the cuticle and conditioning the hair. And I have to admit, you know, as a 32 year veteran, I was not taught any of that stuff. It was basically like, this is what you do to lighten hair. This is what you do to cover gray. I had to learn all that over the years, but even when I'm behind the chair, I rarely think about what is going on in a chemical way, which is good and bad because what's good about it is I don't overcomplicate what, how and why I'm choosing a certain tone. I'm not thinking about, well, if I do this, it's going to raise the pH and then I'm not going to be able to close the cuticle. Like that's not in my mind. And lucky for me, products have changed and progressed over the years where they've gotten so much better tools for us to use that we kind of don't have to think about that as much. However, I think there's a big, big misconception that both Dennis and I agree on and we're trying 
desperately to try to get the word out to as many people as possible. And that is that peroxide does not give you your lift. If you follow me on these talks, if you've seen me speak at the hair shows, I will always stress that peroxide is not your lift. It is not true that if you want a level five client to go to level eight, that you use a 30 volume developer. It's just not true. I've tested it on swatches. Dennis is a chemist. He backs up what I'm saying that yeah, he said he got in trouble the other day on one of his lives because he referred to peroxide as the dumb blonde. And he didn't mean it derogatory towards blondes, but that is a thing that's been for years. You know, blondes have more fun and Marilyn Monroe, and he was being cute, saying that peroxide doesn't have a brain and it doesn't know what its job is. And I, I want to repeat that because that was huge for me to be able to explain that. Peroxide does not know what it's doing. So people give peroxide way too much credit. You've heard in the 70s and 80s, oh, I'm gonna put lemon juice and peroxide on my hair and sit out in the sun, and I'm gonna get blonde, and it's just not true. It doesn't, peroxide does not have the ability to make brown hair blonde by itself. So that was huge, the way that he explained that, that it's you know the ditzy blonde that doesn't know its role, but when peroxide is added to a shade of color, that has other chemicals going on in it, peroxide reacts to the actual thing it's being added to. So for example, people think that 10 volume is like the slow turtle in the race that it like barely does anything and us hairdressers are like, come on, come on, come on, we have no time for this 10 volume. But the 10 volume, when mixed with a level 12 color, will lift just as much as a 20, 30, or 40. So it behaves with the thing that it's mixed to. So a 10 volume with a level four color is gonna behave as deposit only because, I let me repeat that, it's not deposit only, but it's more deposit because it still will shift the base a little bit when it's permanent color. But 10 volume will do more depositing than lifting with a lower level of color when you mix that same 10 volume with a level nine, a level eight, a level 10, a level 12, it's going to do more lifting than depositing. So I thought that was really interesting and something that's really important to know. So being experienced, being busy behind the chair does not excuse you from continuing your education. You have to constantly be learning new things. Another thing that Dennis shared that I was happy to hear because I thought I was crazy, Shades EQ has been around for a really long time. It was when I was first learning color, everyone just pulled permanent color through the hair. They would squirt the hair with a water bottle to water it down and then pull it through to the ends. But there was never any reason for ammonia to hit the ends of that hair. There's no reason for it. So we didn't have any alternative. That's all we had. So then Shades EQ comes along and people, I don't even think Redken really understood how powerful Redken Shades EQ was when they first introduced it. Um, it was everything that we've ever needed because it gives us the deposit, the depth, the tone, all the things we're looking for in the ends of the hair. They don't need to be relifted. They just need their tone to be redeposited. And then they took away the lifting power. So if you're just joining me, I started this um, coffee chat saying, please type the word color into your comment so that I can send you a PDF with 10 facts on um, setting yourself apart as a colorist. So just take a second, type the word color, and then um, you'll get the uh, PDF sent to you. So when you understand what's going on with the color, Shades EQ has all of the same dye load in it as permanent color, people will write to me and they'll say, you said that you know you use demi-permanent to color hair that has gray and I just don't understand how it can do that. So you know they'll say to me, when the hair fades over time, isn't the gray gonna come through all the way on the ends? And I never understood what that, where that question came from but now I understand that people don't really understand what a demi is. I think there's major, major confusion between what is a demi and what is a semi. 
a semi-permanent jazzing, um, Sebastian cellophane's. There's a new product from Wella. It's literally straight out of a little bottle with a pointy lid. I always blank on the name, but you squirt it right out of the bottle onto the hair and it's strictly tone. It's not, there's no developer. There's no opening of the cuticle. There's no driving it in. It's just sitting on the top and making it pretty and shiny and it washes off within a few shampoos. That is semi-permanent. When we're talking about root shadows, glazes, um, you know, all of the things that we do with Redken Shades EQ, including for me, covering gray, uh, it is just every bit as permanent as permanent color. And I think that is the biggest, biggest thing I can leave you with today is understanding how permanent it is. And Dennis shared another fact. I, I don't use a flat iron. I don't style hair. So I don't really understand I see a lot of heat damage coming through my doors and clients are always quick to blame it on their hair color. Oh, I don't want you put doing anything to my ends because my hair is really fried and their hair is so straight that it almost looks ridiculous. It doesn't even look like hair anymore. It's like sticks hanging on their head and their cuticle is so blown out. There's no cuticle left on the hair whatsoever because they're cranking their flat iron up to 450 degrees and they're doing it every day, every day, every day. I used to hear stories of my daughter's friends when they went to sleepaway camp. They were freaking out because it's so humid at camp and they don't have air conditioning and they would sneak to the bathroom in the middle of activities to flat iron their hair because they had ethnic hair that got really big and giant in the humidity and they were so embarrassed of you know these little swirly curls. So people that are addicted to flat irons will definitely overdo it. So what Dennis shared, sometimes um, I will come across, I have one client that pops in my head. She goes back and forth a lot between as blonde as me and as dark as the Kardashians. And before coming to me, she came to me with dark hair that I then had to slowly take blonde in the healthiest way possible. And she was really tough to break through. And I would say, stop going to that salon that you're going to and letting them put permanent color on your hair. And she would say, I'm not, I swear they're not doing permanent color. And I always thought she didn't know what she was talking about. But what Dennis shared was demi-permanent color when exposed to heat over and over again. So if you're doing glazes with Shades EQ and you're thinking you're being so gentle and it's wonderful and your clients are complaining about damage and all that, in 450 degrees, the flat iron melts the demi into the hair. So when we go to make that Demi level five brunette into a caramely blonde and we're like, what the heck? We're putting lightener in there and we're looking in the foil and it's turning into that blarange mess of no lift, no matter what we do. I was beating myself up saying like, what am I doing? Like, I should know how to do this. This should be easy peasy for me. And it wasn't. And to the point where I said to her, you have to pick a lane. You have to either stay blonde or stay brown because you're really stressing me out. And more than that, you're stressing out your hair and your hair is just shot. And you don't get a second chance at your hair. I mean, her hair is this length. So that by the time all that damage would grow out from here all the way down to here, that's a long, long time. Hair only grows this much, you know, every month. So, and in the meantime, she's flat ironing every single day at 450 and baking it in. So I hope that you guys are like mind blown like I am because I never knew that. Um, the other thing that I learned is that in 19, I think it was 1991, 1996. So I became a hairdresser in 1986. So I mastered knowing all the bases of Shades EQ, knowing what works, knowing what doesn't. And 9V Victor was always the go-to color for correcting yellow in the hair. And I'm watching all these new hair color educators and they're building these mixtures of V, P, G, and, and things that sound like they would cancel each other out. And I was always, I'd always do the head to the side, like, okay, well, their color is amazing, so clearly it's working for them, but I'm curious why they're not just doing 9V by itself. So then I was starting to have issues with 9V by itself, not doing what it used to do. So I was never a fan of using clear. I was taught that clear 
not only dilutes the level of the tone, but it dilutes the amount of actual tonality. Like if you're looking for a V and you add clear, it's going to be a lighter violet. It's not going to be as impactful. And there's barely any tone at a level nine anyway. So I was taught not to go crazy with clear. So all of a sudden, all these formulas that everybody's sharing are and clear and clear and clear. And they're also like 9G and 9V. And I'm like, well, that kind of doesn't make sense because that cancels each other. So the reason why is 1996, Redken decided to put gray background in their level nines. So they start with a gray background and then add in the violet. So if you've seen that you've used a 9V on your, you know, little bit of yellow that you just want to kick out and it becomes that like, ugh, not even pretty blonde anymore, that started happening to me. So if any of you have my book, I almost have to rewrite a chapter in my book because one of the chapters is don't go glazy crazy. Like glazes were driving me crazy because I would have this beautiful blonde result and then I would glaze it for literally 10 minutes because I was always a scaredy cat glazer. And the client would say, well, now you made me brown because you know how blondes are. They swear that brown, you know, that, that level nine blonde is brown. So just that little bit of tone caused them to think that they were deeper. So I just started to stop glazing all together and I just left everybody raw, but I just stood there and caught it at the perfect color where it was a pretty blonde. And I also used to highlight a lot with color levels, like a 12 ash high lift color with 40 volume. Now that there's balayage and all these other techniques, I pretty much use lightener a lot more than I did when I wrote my book. So that's a little update. I have to do a 2.0 book to apologize for my, my opinion on glazes because now I am obsessed with glazes. I think that uh, root shadows are the greatest thing to ever come along in my entire career, hands down, other than getting away from the cap. That was, that was uh, phenomenal getting into um, foiling versus pulling that torture chamber um, cap with the needle. So that's a lot. I'm, I'm vomiting a lot of information, but I was, I couldn't go to bed. You know, my head was spinning. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I saw this because I'm doing a free training on Monday, <clears throat> December 10th at 2 p.m. right here on Expert Color Solutions page. You don't have to sign up, you don't have to email me, you don't have to ask me for permission. Jump in here on Monday, December 10th at 2 p.m. And I will be talking, I'm sure, for at least two hours nonstop about diving deep into formulation. I think that the biggest disconnects in people becoming a six-figure colorist are doing the Hail Mary when they're formulating, not understanding what's going on chemically and what they're doing. They're just grabbing free colors, mixing them together, doing this, praying that it turns out, and then bullshitting their client as to why it didn't turn out. I've heard some doozy excuses on forums of this client's annoying, she's crazy, she this, she that, and then I see the formula and I see what they did and I'm like, the client's not crazy. The, the colorist was misinformed. So get educated, come to this complimentary class. I will be diving deep, deep, deep into formulation because that is my passion. I really believe that if you don't truly understand the chemistry of what you're working with and you're just grabbing tubes, grabbing bottles, if you're using 30 and 40 volume on single process colors on your regrowth, that's not the way that I was taught. I'm not here to tell you right, wrong, stop doing it. I'm just here to tell you how I do it and how I found success. And the people that I've trained have found a lot of success. And Dennis has trained a gajillion people and they found a lot of success. So as in every education, always take what you want, leave the rest behind, but don't stop reaching for it. Do not stop educating yourself. I find inspiration every single day on Instagram. I am fairly new to Instagram. I was very into Facebook. I spend way too much time on Facebook. But I found that hairstylists in general, especially the demographic that I'm looking to teach, the people that I'm the most impactful for are the people that are just coming out of beauty school to like eight to 10 years in because they haven't been doing it long enough to get really bad habits that can't be undone. The seasoned colorist has become my biggest fan at the hair shows 
because I'll throw these little nuggets out that they're like, oh my gosh, no one ever taught me that. And then their one problem client that they can't seem to fix the issue becomes easy. And then they're like, what else does this lady have to say? And then they end up becoming my student. I didn't, initially when I became an educator, I was like, okay, <clears throat> who is my client avatar? Who's my person that's looking for what Elaine Travis has to say? Who am I writing this book to? So I wrote the book to that new stylist that I remember like it was yesterday, sitting in beauty school, reading the chapter, which by the way, insert last week of school, I was graduating in one week and we just turned the page to hair color page one. So the entire 1500 hours that I spent working on live models, doing practical, being on the floor, I never for a second was taught what was in the bottle. I was handed a bottle from an instructor and said, put this on Harriet, this is her formula, set the timer for 30 minutes and then shampoo her. And I would say, okay, because I was 19 years old, I was taught not to disrespect my elders and the teachers were teachers and I'm the student. So I was like, okay, maybe there's a reason that she's holding this information out. Maybe it's, we're not ready for it yet. But when it became the last week of school and we just started, this is the color wheel. This cancels this and this cancels this. And I was like, what does this have to do with Harriet? I don't understand. What does this wheel with these colors have to do with this liquid? And it was liquid because it was Miss Clairol as we're going back to 1986. All we had was Miss Clairol or Wella Color Charm, basically. There wasn't tube color yet. To my knowledge, we were given that in school. So we were handed this liquid, and we basically go through the motions of putting it on the hair, just on the gray. We were taught not to overlap, which was you know, the only good information, and then to set the timer for 30 minutes. We weren't told Harriet may be extra uh, resistant. She may need 40 minutes. Harriet might be on medication, you know, make sure that you clarify the hair before you put this strange liquid on her head. So I could go on and on and on, but the purpose of this live is not for me to dive deep into these things. It's to invite you to me diving deep. And I will stay on as long as you guys are willing to stay on because I can talk about hair color all day long. I wake up in the morning with things popping into my head. And I really do believe that is my purpose in life is to make people understand that color is so much simpler than we've made it out to be. Uh, it really can only do four things. It can lighten hair. It can deepen hair. It can change the tone in the hair. And it can cover gray. That's it. So don't overcomplicate it. It's not open heart surgery. It's not, you know, the chemistry is there to help us understand the responsibility that we have that you don't want to you know, go near somebody's eyebrow with, you know, 40 volume and hair color and God forbid, get it into her eyeball. Like there's a reason that we had to learn all of that chemistry. But I think that some educators get so hung up in the product knowledge part of hair color education. They talk about rose hips and lavender for the cooling on the scalp. I don't give a shit about any of that. What ingredients makes my hair color smell the way that it, that it does. And I've met with manufacturers where I've wanted to hook up with a strong hair color company to help share my message, to get me in more shows, to be able to have more money to spend on my educational materials. And I have to say, I really need to stay independent because I'll sit at a table with them and they'll tell me, oh, our color, our permanent color has a special developer that magically turns it into a demi. And Dennis last night was talking on the live on Instagram that that just is not chemically possible. And I, I literally was clapping in my dining room saying, yes, I'm not crazy because sometimes when I'm the only one teaching these things, I start to think that I am a veteran of 32 years and things do change. And I think, well, maybe I'm like one of the old people now that's doing it the old way. And then I'm like, no, honey, you do more education than anybody on planet Earth. I go to more hair color classes, read more, go on more Instagram feeds, more Facebook feeds. I do more searching for inspiration than anyone that I personally know and follow. You know, a lot of the colorists that I follow, like Tracy Cunningham, Tracy's busy doing celebrities and doing what she does. She's not to my knowledge, she travels a lot. So she gets inspiration from going to 
you know, Spain and Dubai and all the places that celebrities fly her to. But I don't think Tracy sits down and stalks other people's Instagram and says, oh, wow, look at how she did that, you know, where she split that section and then split it again and did that. That's so cool. Like, that's the stuff that lights me up. And then I take so much time to do that because, you know, I'm 51 years old. I'm not out clubbing on the weekends and I'm not hungover on Sunday. So I am home just devouring all this information. And then I feel like, what a shame would that be if I didn't share it with other people? Why should it be locked in my head or why should it only be shared with the people that work with me in the salon? The other thing that I love doing is having people shadow at my salon. If you saw, if you follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is Lainey Cake, L-A-I-N-E-Y-C-A-K-E. And if you follow me, you'll see that I had a girl, Truly, who I met her at the IBS hair show. She doesn't speak really good English. She speaks, she does well for being from, she's from Cambodia and we can have a conversation and you see how fast I talk. And she came up and gave me the biggest hug. She bought my book. She said it's really helping her understand hair color, but she still has other questions. And I was so blown away when Joe Blackwell, early in my career, I went to see her in New York and she was so inspirational and so high energy. And at the end, we were in New York City. And at the end of the class, she said, if you ever want to come and spend the day at Dop Dop Salon, just reach out, call me, pick a date and come. And I was like, wow, like people are so greedy and stingy with their salon secrets. You know, they want to keep it here because that's what makes them special. And she just put it out there and I am bold as it is and I will ask anybody anything. So I right away walked up to her and I said, hey, I'm from Philadelphia. I'm here. I'm here till tomorrow. Do you mind if I come with you right now? Like you're headed back to your salon. Can I come right now and just like see your salon and see how you do? And she's like, come on, follow me. And my best friend was with me and we walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. And we got to pass by Dash, the Kardashian store. Like I saw areas of New York that I never would have walked down those streets. So there was inspiration right there. We were walking with her husband. When would I ever get to meet Joe Blackwell's husband and listen to their inner little couple dialogue? It was so cool to see them be so relaxed. She wasn't Joe the teacher up on stage. She was Joe the stressed out salon owner that had to go to the salon to do X, Y, Z. So that was amazing to me that she let us in on that. So then we got there and we saw the space and we saw what she uses and we saw how they do the timing on their book and how they schedule and that stuff is invaluable. So I was like, you know what? If, if and when I am ever blessed to be on stage and share what I do with other people, I'm going to be that colorist that opens my arms and says, come hang out with me. And if you get one little nugget or one little change in what you do as a colorist, then I'm sure I'm going to learn as much from you as you are from me. So Julie came. She's adorable. We ended up having a slow day in the salon, which I, of course, felt terrible. I was like ready to call people and say, come get your hair done so I can teach this girl something. You know, it was a very light day in the salon. A lot of people have the flu. So we had last minute cancellations and she was driving over an hour to come see me. So I said, you know what? No, I'm just going to set up a mannequin head and we're just going to do an impromptu class. So it was very um, spontaneous. My um, top haircut stylist who, you know, has one best of Philly. She's an excellent cut. She does nothing but haircut. She does not love teaching, and I know that. So I kind of put her on the spot, which she probably was a little annoyed with me, but she had somebody cancel. And I said, listen, I have a client right now, and it's just a single process. She's not going to get wowed by a single process. How about if you show her how to razor cut on the mannequin, and then when you guys are done, I'll be free, and then we'll do a painting class on the mannequin. And so we did this impromptu class, and then I jumped on Instagram Live. So you guys got to see a free class of razor cutting and she got to do a razor cutting class and she was a natural. It was amazing because we're, we both, the girl teaching her the haircut and I both, blah, 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 we talk so fast. And my daughter who spent six months in Thailand came down because she met Julie at the New York hair show with me. So she came down to give her a hug and say hello. And she said, mom, you are talking so fast. The poor girl is from Cambodia. So I only have one volume and one speed with my voice and I'm working on it. It's so hard for me to slow down. 
but my I'm so ADD that my mind is so excited to get everything in to share that I can't slow my voice down because it almost stops the track in my head of what I want to deliver. So I always say I am 100% should have been medicated as a kid for ADD. And I was having this conversation with a client last night. She was saying, oh my gosh, my daughter is so ADD, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, I am too, and so is my son, and so is my brother. And all three of us are a lot alike. My brother, my son, and myself, we all fly by the seat of our pants. We react in the moment. We throw things out there, and then we're like, oh, crap, now I have to do this. But you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. When I look back at my career, for me to be able to go and see Beth and Carmine Minardi as a color specialist, I really didn't have a lot of interest in seeing Carmine do the cut because I don't cut. But I also feel like if I put myself in that corner of I only do color, put my head down, I don't know anything that's going on with cutting, how am I gonna be good at a proper consultation with my client? Because clients, if, you're, if you specialize in color, you'll agree that when you're doing a consultation, the client wants to start to talk about the haircut. This happens to me all day, every day with new clients. They'll say, well, this is falling a little flat and I need volume. And I'm like, okay, stop right there. I'm not cutting your hair, I'm coloring it, but I do wanna hear your plan for your haircut. So tell me a little bit about the cut, but we're gonna talk more about your color. So I try to grab the person who's gonna do the haircut so that they can consult in haircut terminology, but I'm listening because if I don't know that she's suddenly gonna be, like if I were to do a short bang and not have this longer grown out piece, I'm gonna place that money piece in a different spot if I'm gonna do a straight across bang than if I'm separating it the way that I have my hair. So it's important to not say, you know, I, people say like, I don't do perms. You know, perms are out. Well, if a client is having an issue, like I have a lot of clients that get really flat in the crown, and I will be able to say to them, you know, I'm gonna send you to, to Teresa, and she's gonna put four really fat rods just right at your crown, and give you like a little spot perm to give you fullness right there. We have other people that have, which I have them, where's my hair? The little swirly, curly, swirly, sweaty things from menopause that drive me crazy. I'm not that, vain to do that, I don't care. It's usually tucked behind a curl here anyway, but a lot of clients that makes them crazy. So I say, we have a special service that we do here where it's called a curl tamer. And we can go in and spot, straighten just those little areas. It takes literally 10 minutes. Come in a little bit early for your haircut and we will defrizz your temples. So if I didn't pay attention to the cut side and the services that they're doing, I wouldn't be able to recommend that. So we need to educate ourselves. We need to collaborate with our coworkers on how we can send people to each other for different services. Know your strong points. Stick to the things that you love to do. I hate brow waxing. I have brow waxing at my salon. I've done it for years. I just don't enjoy it. So now when a client says to me, hey, I know I didn't book it, but can I get a wax today? I'm like, sure. I have three other people that would love to add that two-minute service add 18 or $15, whatever it is, to their ticket, and they were in between clients anyway. So don't be afraid to share your information, don't be stingy, because you'll always learn from another person. Uh, don't you know hold back your trade secrets, visit other salons, come visit me, I love having people come and shadow, even if you just come for half a day or an hour. Um, I'm doing private one-on-ones in Florida, I would love to have you for that. Um, that is not a shadow thing. That's actually me spending me the whole day teaching you. Um, that's not free, but the shadow is, is always something that you can do. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Please, again, comment the word color. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, please, and if you're on here live, thank you for being on here. Um, just in the comments, just type the word color, and I will send you my top 10 tips. And I also really, really want to see you on Monday, December 10th. This is my free training. This is me saying thank you for following me all year and watching my coffee talks, coming to see me live at shows, doing my paid trainings. This is a thank you. It's gonna be great. We're gonna dive deep. I'm gonna answer every question that I, in my ability, can answer. And I'm excited for it. I hope you're excited for it. 
If you're not around, some people work on Mondays, especially during holiday time. I usually do my trainings on Sundays, but I did a poll. First, I did a poll asking, what do you want to hear? Do you want highlighting tips or do you want formulation? Hands down, it was like this. Formulation won the poll by a lot. Um, so I think people still really struggle with that. And without proper formulation, you cannot complete a great hair color and you will not be hitting your goal of becoming a six-figure colorist. So thank you. Enjoy your coffee. Enjoy your day. And I will see you on Monday the 10th. Thanks so much.